Hello everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. Seeing as it's the Irish Readathon I said I'd bring you a list of my favourite historical fiction books about Ireland. So half of these are by Irish authors and half of them aren't. That wasn't intentional, it's just the way it worked out. This obviously isn't an exhaustive list, there's still so many great books out there that I'd like to read and I'm not nearly as well versed in Irish books as some other booktubers and I have a lot of catching up to do but these are a few of the books that I've enjoyed in the past few years. Um, so you, you'll notice that I've not included any book in here that's set before like the late 1800s. That's because I'm a bit funny about historical fiction that's set earlier than that. Personally I find books set earlier than that a little bit depressing. Um, it's history, it's important to know it. However in my fiction books I do like a, a happy or at least a hopeful ending and uh, unfortunately there's not many of those in uh, books especially about like the famine. Um, a happy ending in those kind of books tends to be immigration to America which just makes me sad. Um, I do read loads of non-fiction set earlier in the period so um, yeah I just said I'd mention that in case people were wondering. I will keep trying and I'm sure there is a book that I will enjoy out there but um, and it doesn't mean that they're not well written just that I haven't enjoyed them as much as I've enjoyed these books. So I've kind of grouped these books into several categories. So the first books I'm going to talk about I describe as kind of dealing explicitly with Irish independence um, in the late 19th, early 20th century. Um, so there are of course many, many of these. It's a very popular topic with Irish historical fiction authors, but I've decided to just keep it to two just for the sake of variety in the video. So the first book I'm going to talk about is actually a short story collection. Um, it was published in 1931 and that is Guests of the Nation by Frank O'Connor. Um, so this is a collection of short stories all centering around the Irish Revolution. Um, most of the stories in this collection were good but the first one um, was something else. It's the titular short story uh, Guests of the Nation. It's about these two British prisoners and their IRA guards who are all staying at this cottage somewhere in the country with a local woman and the strange interactions between them all. So I'll read you the first line because I think it really describes the whole themes of the book very well. At dusk, the big Englishman, Belcher, would sift his long legs out of the ashes and say, well chums, what about it? And Noble and myself would say, all right chum, for we had picked up some of their curious expressions and the little Englishman, Hawkins, would light the lamp and bring out the cards. So yeah, it's well worth read, even if only for that one story. So the next book I'm going to talk about is substantially longer than a short story and that's Trinity by Leon Uris. Um, so this is an American author, I believe it's a very well-known book. Um, it was published in 1976. I swallowed this book up, I actually read it on audiobook. I actually remember listening to it while I was driving around Kerry on holidays. I just made my drive longer, I was driving out the Dingle Peninsula in the fog, I couldn't see a thing but I was glued to the story. Um, so in a nutshell, and it's very hard to describe this book in a nutshell, it's a coming of age story really um, about two friends who live in the north of Ireland, they're Seamus and Connor. The different ways that they become involved with the struggle for independence but it's really about more than that, um, like everything is covered here so like between folk memories of the famine, um, religious tensions between Catholics and Protestants in the north of Ireland, um, the horrific working and living conditions of the poor in this time, uh, class differences, romances and it's so well written and just so much drama. Um, it's such an exciting book. Um, I can't believe that I've not read the sequel Redemption yet. Um, so this book is kind of set between 1880s and 1916 so I, I really should re read the next book to pick up where it left off but I'd kind of like to reread this one first and it is a big time commitment because the second book is very long as well um, but it's something I'll definitely be looking forward to at some stage in the future. So the next books I'd say they're not really centred on the War of Independence but have it more as a backdrop. The first book I'm going to talk about is the first in a trilogy and it is Songs of Love and War by Santa Montefiore. I know this author is uh, quite well known and this is really like a family saga type series. So the basis is this Anglo-Irish family and um, the Deverells and they, they live in this big house in Ireland and the relationships they have with each other, with the locals, with people in England against the backdrop of the troubled times of obviously Irish War of Independence and also the First World War because this takes place kind of at the end of the 19th start of the 20th century. Um, so the main character is this wonderful character called Kitty. Um, she's the daughter of the house and there's also Bridie who's her friend and servant and then her 
kind of more glamorous English cousin Celia who also comes over to stay like during the summers. There's some really truly great character relationships in this book and I'd highly recommend if you usually like this type of book but the Irish setting might put a bit of a twist on it for you. The whole trilogy is great but the first book definitely I enjoyed the most. So the next book then is probably familiar to most people already from booktube and that's The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. What can I say about this book that's not already been said? I could have included also another book of hers, The Wonder, on this list, but uh, this just pipped the post for it because I liked this one so much. Um, so it's set in a maternity hospital in Dublin during the flu pandemic in 1918 and also the War of Independence is going on in the background. Really it's such a claustrophobic read because it's about this nurse called Julia who gets assigned to this very small ward that's specifically for patients that are infected with the flu. So I read this I think in two sittings because it was so hard to put this book down it was just so intense. Um, A massive <laughs> warning if you are a bit squeamish about medical details because it's extremely graphic on the maternity hospital sections of this book and um, just to be aware of that going in but it was all to a purpose it wasn't like gratuitous and it was such a moving read um, the character of Julia was fascinating the relationship she had with other characters and how she dealt with the patients how the patients dealt with being cooped up in this uh, ward that they couldn't leave it's such a great book the last two books I suppose are kind of more wild cards. This next one because it's maybe a tiny bit of a cheat but it is the book that inspired this video so I couldn't leave it out um, and that is Valiant Gentleman by Sabina Murray. Valiant Gentleman is about uh, Roger Casement who would be known to most Irish people as an Irish patriot but he also had a long career before that as a British consul in various countries in Africa probably most famously in the Congo. So he had such an interesting life and since we Reading this book I've meant to pick up a full biography of him but I haven't yet and uh, hopefully that's something I'll get to at some stage. What this book is really about is his friendship with this English sculptor called Herbert Ward and uh, Herbert's wife um, Sarita who is she's the star character of this book she was excellent and how that friendship evolves from the early days of their friendship through the First World War and after that. So one of the major themes of this book is uh, Caseman's homosexuality. It's a debate whether this is a historical fact or whether the Black Diaries were uh, concocted to discredit him. But um, this book takes the stand that he was a gay man at a time when this is obviously a criminal offence. The book really portrays it so wonderfully and sensitively. I'd highly recommend it just for that alone. Um, but yeah, a brilliant book about a fascinating man. So the final book I'm going to talk about is kind of an odd one out because it's set a little bit later in the century uh, in the 1950s and that is uh, Christine Falls by Benjamin Black. This is the first book in the Quirk series. Quirk is this uh, pathologist in Dublin. His first name is never revealed. He belongs to this extremely dysfunctional upper class family and there's a lot of hidden secrets in the family's past and difficult relationships. And Quirk is really a fascinating character who's you know had a very difficult life in some ways and that's really had an impact on him. It's revealed kind of bit by bit throughout the book to you know why he might be the way he is. Ostensibly this book like all of the others in the series is a murder mystery but really there's so much else going on and in this book in particular there's a lot about the problems with Irish institutions which were such a big facet obviously of Irish society in the 1900s. Benjamin Black is the pen name of John Banville so it's obviously exceptionally well written this is like all the series is good but this is such a strong start to the series and so memorable it's so atmospheric I used to read these books when I was on holidays from college and back home and missing Dublin um, maybe it, it does show a bit of a darker side of Dublin but it really just evoked Dublin so well um, I would highly recommend this book as I would all books on this list or else I wouldn't be talking about them so that's it. That's the books I wanted to talk about today for Irish historical fiction that I've loved. Please let me know below if there's any books that you'd recommend. I'd love to hear about them or whether you've read any of these books. Um, so yes, thank you for listening. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next Thursday for another video.